Welcome everyone to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Welcome everyone to Music Junkies. I'm your host, Annette Smith, and today our guest is singer, songwriter, producer, art, you know, author, actor, publisher. Jeez. The list kind of goes on and on. You're Mr. USA pageant title holder, which is like unreal, unreal former model. As you can tell, you're beautiful, right? Obviously, you're a former yeah. model. And obviously, you're a multi-talented artist. And you're a star, which is pretty cool. So please Thank welcome you. Hollis Morissette to the show. Yay! I need to clap things, right? <laughs> I know, guy. Clap, clap. No. <laughs> That's what I feel like I need, like a clap track after that. <laughs> well, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. I know. I'm excited to be here. I, I was oh, I was busy schedule today, but this was on my mind. And I was like, you know, I I don't mind doing public interviews and podcast interviews and stuff. Um, they're For the most part, they're great. So I was looking forward to today. And I was like, yeah, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah, it will be fun. But before we get started, I always like to ask my guests, what was your experience putting your playlist together for me today? My experience, um, honestly, I just threw together some songs that had a lot of memorabilia. Um, a lot of those songs I remember, I mean, obviously, I'm still in my 20s. So a lot of those songs were out before I was born, but I yeah. grew up listening to them. So I just remember where I was when I first heard it, singing along to the songs. I even remember some of the music videos. So I just chose some of those songs because a lot of them are, I don't want to say sad songs, but some of them are sad songs where they sing about love and pain. And with my music, that's what I sing about as well. So for whatever reason, I always seem to connect to the, that is <laughs> connect to fast music. I do. Um, and I love, I love all different types of music, but I think those are just the ones I resonate with the most. No, I love it. Yeah. And I always love to know the experience of putting the playlist together because I, it's almost like I can unconsciously connect to, to you in a way when I hear your play playlist, I can kind of get yeah. a feel of how the interview is going to go. Um, sometimes I'll request a play playlist and I'll get one from somebody. I'm like, Oh, I, I don't, you know, I don't know if this person's going to be a right connection. You just never know, right? <laughs> right? You just, because you can just tell by the playlist. You just mm -hmm. you, kind of type of person they're going to be. But I absolutely loved your playlist. It was a lot of songs that I haven't heard in a long time. Not that I forgot them, but they're just not always on my my playlist. Yeah. Um, some of them are like epic that I absolutely love that I have funny stories to. So that's kind of a coincidence is as well. So we're going to get started with your first song. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> the Tony Braxton. Yeah, Tony Braxton. Another sad love song. So what's your memory behind that or your story behind that song? uh another sad love song okay so obviously that song came out like right before I was born um but I just remember being at home and I know it sounds weird like what is a child doing listening to this song <laughs> but I think when you're in the car and your parents are driving or whatever you know the song comes on the radio and then I think the fondest memory that I have of that song is when I went and visited my grandparents and I think they just turned on the television and put on whatever, but I don't think they knew the, the, uh, the music station was on where they do the music videos. They don't really do that anymore, but where they played all the great hits and they had the music videos with it. And I just remember Tony Braxton. It was, I think mostly in black and white and she got out of the car and and secretly she was one of my crushes because she has a great body a great voice and i just i just remember her just being this amazing person with this low voice and the song was just i don't know 
it's one of those songs where I get it, it's sad, but even if you're in an okay mood, you, you're you not going to like cry to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you have to remember her legs. She had beautiful legs. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say she definitely got out of the car with legs first. So yeah. that was an attraction. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So what was it like growing up in your household? How was your childhood? My childhood, I would say, was chill. But also, I was one of those people, I was born where I knew from an early age I was independent. Like, you know how you have like the home video footage that your parents will videotape you, your grandparents? You will almost always see me holding the camera or me running away from the camera, doing my own thing, picking up the phone, calling random people, trying to start a conversation, creating my own show, or putting on my own concert. You know, I was very, very independent. And at times I think it got me in trouble um, because there was a time where I was two and my mom was um, doing some ironing but she was in a different room and I snuck off and I, I remember picking up the iron trying to call myself helping her out and then I ended up dropping it on my thigh mm. and she you know as kids things happen like like that so quick yeah so before she could even turn around I was already screaming crying and I had like slightly burned myself <laughs> with the iron so like I still have the scar to remember but yeah I, I've always been independent um definitely I would say I come from a musical family so a lot of music and yeah a lot yeah yeah did your like were your parents singers songwriters did they just have music kind of playing all the time in the house my mother's a singer okay uh, yeah, she's a great singer. She actually, when she was a teenager, she was offered a record deal, but her parents, my grandparents turned it down, which I guess in a way worked out because then I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> but my father, I love that man, but he cannot carry a tune and <laughs> he cannot dance. So <laughs> no, and he can he can ballroom dance because my parents used to ballroom dance all the time. Wow. So that's that's about it. He can't carry a tune and he can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> Opposites attract, right? Opposites attract. Yeah. <laughs> what is one thing that your parents taught you at an early age that if you kind of look back, you know, it they kind of instilled something into you? Um I'll give you two quick ones. Um I was always taught number one. No matter how your day is going, never let someone steal your joy. Never let someone bring you down um, because you're the one that's in control of your day. And the other one is no matter what you have, no matter what you gain, your family name is all you have. So never tarnish the family name. So, you know, don't. Those are good. Yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do it. Don't go out and steal <laughs> it and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 Those are good. Those are like words of wisdom. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> your parents like, oh, are two strong ones. <laughs> <laughs> they are very strong. You know, I was like, dang, you know, that's <laughs> thing that you learn at an early age that, you know, like, what about don't eat candy before bed? <laughs> <laughs> don't eat yellow snow. Like, what about those ones? No, yeah, I, I know. deep ones that I'm not going to get until I'm like, you know, late twenties and having a family, then it's going to, then it's going to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next song. Okay. <laughs> Feelings gotta stay. Oh, uh, you know, I love Rick's music. Um, very diverse in my household growing up. Um, especially, I think, just with me being like mixed, multiracial and hearing different music on the radio. I mean, yeah, I've heard, you know, I've heard all kinds of music growing up. Um, a lot of uh, R&B and slow songs and jazz, but you know, I've heard, you know, great 
you know, deal of rock or pop or any different genres, you know, I think the only thing I didn't grow up on, which I don't have any disrespect towards, I think every artist is great. Um, I just didn't grow up on metal music, but that's probably the only genre. Oh, and, and country, although there are some good country songs, but for the most part, all the other genres I have grew up on. So I just remember Rick and Correct me if I'm wrong. I always pronounce his last name Okasic, but someone told me it's Okasic. So I don't know which one. It could be both. But um, I grew up on his music as well. I think it was just one of those things where he gives off a good, a good vibe, like a good prince or a good, um, what's his name? Um, I almost said, um, now I'm drawing another blank. <laughs> <laughs> But like a good Prince vibe. Oh, David Bowie, you yeah. know, kind of gives off that good kind of rockish vibe. And I think Feelings Gotta Stay is my favorite song just because I love the beat. I love the lyrics and it just really gets you feeling some type of way. Yeah. Do you play a musical instrument? Not anymore. Fun fact, not, not a lot of people know this about me. I don't think I've ever said this before, maybe once, but um. I played the violin. For oh, wow. Years. Yeah. Wow. So I played from fifth grade all the way through graduating high school. Wow. Yeah. I started out with a viola, but I didn't like it because it was too big. And then I had my, my mom trade it in for a violin. Um, and then I thought, oh, this is perfect. It fit great. And I was like, oh, I like this better. So I played it for a little, yeah, eight years. And I still have it today. It's on a mantle in my house as a display for memorabilia, just to kind of remind myself that I play this beautiful instrument. I still have some of my musical pieces. So I, I think it was one of the, the greatest things I picked up musically. Do you remember your first song that you learned on there? Oh, goodness. Um, hmm. I don't remember. Mm, do I remember? I don't remember the first song that I learned, but I do know one of my most favorite songs that I learned. And it was a song called Pegasus. And I forgot who it was by, but it was it was one of those songs where it starts off kind of slow and then it really picks yeah. up fast. It was really great. I mean, the thing was like four to six pages long. Oh, wow. It was one of those songs where it was like over six, seven minutes to play. Um, I do know the composer, I believe, the very first song, it was by either Mozart or Johann Bach. Oh, wow. One of those two, I know for sure, was the very first song. Because I was like, my my school was um, more of like a top school, more like one of those advanced. And so they always like to keep the reputation. So they didn't really like leave room for us to... I guess start or small. <laughs> like, like we're not going to play like, Prince. I'm sorry. Or we're not going to get you to learn this. We want you to learn all of the greats. Well, yeah, basically, I mean, to say the least, they wanted us to be very strong. And in a way, I guess so, because our class, we always toured and we always did festivals and we did stuff in and out of the country as well. And whenever we did festivals, I'll be honest with you, from fifth grade all the way through graduating high school, um, we always came first place. Wow. There was only one time that we came in second. So wow. they were very strict. There was no room for error. And if you so you must that, have been like a really straight violinist, no room to kind of move around. Did you No, because they made us rehearse? And then yeah. on top of that, they would, you know, strongly encourage that you start what's called zero hour. That was when you go to school before school starts to oh. practice. And then you would have your class during the day. And then they would strongly encourage that you either come after school or you can take a Saturday to practice as well. They were they were very serious about it. And I'm like, okay, are we getting paid for this? Because <laughs> we're practicing right now. <laughs> You're we, me around all over the place and I'm not getting paid and I'm practicing and practicing and practicing. I know. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a very grateful person, but for all the hard work, it would be nice to have more benefits than donuts and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple cents on Spotify. <laughs> that would be nice, but you know. <laughs> I guess I didn't think about that back then. <laughs> That's right. 
did you start singing during that high school time? Is that when you started songwriting and singing as well? No, I started in elementary school. Oh wow! So I was in a I was in a group, um, and I've talked about this maybe in a magazine feature I had or something like that. But um, I uh, started out in a group where in the third grade. Um, long story short, I, you know how you would see your counselor and they would check in with you, you know, how things going and everything. And I remember she asked me, she stopped me a conversation and she said to me, she said, you know, she asked me, are you a singer? And I was like, well, I mean, I like to, but how do you know that? It was very random. And she said, yeah. I can hear it in your voice. And I was like, I didn't know that was a thing. And so then I think after she started saying that, then I heard other people say that, I guess, you know, but um, long story short, after that, I was kind of forced in a good way into the gym where they held the auditions and the choir director was there. So I kind of knew what was going on. And she was like, okay, after auditioning, she was like, I want you to be a you know, part of the choir. And I said, sure, I don't really feel like I have a choice because I'm both <laughs> lead. <laughs> and so then there were three lead singers. No, there were two lead singers. And then you had the choir and they were like five rows. Well, I was like, that's fine. Put me in the back. I'm good. I'll be fifth row. I couldn't even last two days in rehearsal. By the second day, I'm getting pulled up to the lead. And they're uh -huh. like, you to be center lead singer. And I'm like, why? But then I guess it worked out. So we, the three of us, we did a lot of touring around the city and we sang Christmas music. We did some stuff during the spring, but most of our thing was like Christmas time. And yeah. I'll never forget, we wore Santa hats. We wore red, um, red turtleneck sweaters, black pants and black shoes. <laughs> so you're really remember, playing the part. <laughs> I remember my two... Um, singers that sang with me because I was in the center and on my left I think it was her name was Sierra and I won't say her last name but I still remember and then on my right um her name was Jennifer and I remember her first and last name as well but I won't say her last name wow that's know, crazy like, all the way from back then so and then I did write my to answer your question I did write my first song in elementary school it was in fourth grade I wrote a breakup song no, what would I know about a breakup song? What would I know about a breakup? I don't know. I just put some words together. Just kind of what I heard on the radio, but made it my own. Um, I should have kept it because maybe I could have did something with it today. But then um, I didn't officially start writing seriously until like my later teens, early 20s. Because I was like, oh, I really can do this. I have this gift. I can really put these words together and and whether it be journal entries or things I see or things I've experienced. And I'm just like, well, just put it all together and make some music out of it. Yeah. It is a gift to be able to write a song. Yeah. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. And and you can tell when somebody does love it. Yeah. And, and I can tell you love it for sure. From oh, thank you. <laughs> for sure. All right. We got some, this is the best song. Um, Right, never gonna give you up. Recap. Um, One of the best songs in the world. <laughs> I think everybody knows that song, right? If you don't, then I don't know where you've been living. Um, oh, that's such a happy song. Yeah. Um, for me, I think that's just a song. It was on the radio. You heard it in song in, in movies. Excuse me. And it's just another feel good song. And I know it's about a relationship, but. I think if you kind of switch some of the words around, you can play off with it. You know, you don't have to make it romantic. You can also be, you know, in a very platonic way, be speaking to your friend, like, hey, you know, I'm never going to give you up. You're my best friend or, yeah. you know, whoever that you're speaking to, whomever you're speaking to. But that song, I just remember, as soon as the drums come on, you know what song it is and you know it's time to get up and dance. So I just, I've always loved that song as a kid and, if I were born back then, then I would be able to be happily claim that era, but I wasn't. So I could only claim the time that I was born and hearing it growing up. <laughs>
that song to me when I you know I'm obviously a lot older than you but when I like heard that song and went and watched that video it was very shocking right I did not expect this singer to look like the singer did at all like I just did not as, as the assumption there just like hearing this voice and then going and seeing the singer I was like this is night and day like wow yeah <laughs> And I love being surprised like that with artists. I love being surprised like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the people who also shocks you like that, who's a very gorgeous person, Sade. Yeah. You can expect, but yeah. But with Rick, um, I get what you're saying, because like he kind of gives off that... I don't know what you call it, but sort of like that preppy boy type of vibe or whatever. You know, yeah. he kind of in his own way reminds me, one of my favorite movies by Molly Ringwald was yeah. um, Pretty in Pink. Yeah. And the guy that plays, I think her best friend Ducky or something like that, yeah. he kind of gives off that kind of vibe, like very goofy, preppy type. But then you hear his voice and you're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. any singer crushes that you had in maybe elementary school or high school? Um, well, there was Tony for like a little bit. It was like like a little bit. <laughs> and then um, I think most of mine were like models and actresses, but. Who were you crushing on back then? Oh, hands down, it was a tie between Alyssa Milano and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes, I love them. Those were my two. Those are the, the two. And then- I loved oh, Alyssa Milano. Yeah, yeah. And Jennifer Love Hewitt has great breasts. <laughs> I love her boobs. I feel like a lot of people would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew that was coming. I just didn't want to say it, but I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> Cause you know, I just, I'm, I'm a respectful guy. I'm a gentleman and I don't want to come off that way. Cause it's not how I am. I don't like to sexualize people, but you yeah. know, I guess that was part of how she was known, especially back in the nineties as her character, not her, yeah. as her characters, but those two were great. Um, singers. I, I, did you have lots of posters on the walls when you were growing up? You know, funny enough, I didn't have any posters. Wow. No. You know, I had a I had a, a slight crush on Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. Oh yeah. I used to sing Houston, yeah. Always Love You in my room. Like, and I'm sure my parents thought I was crazy forever, because obviously I can't really carry a tune either. And that's probably like the hardest song to sing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, you know, she's, she was an amazing person. I wish I could have met her. She was one of the people that I would have loved to be in the studio with, but um, yeah, talent unmatched. Yeah, I agree. What was some of your struggles in high school, elementary high school? If you look back now. Hmm. Let me see. In elementary school, well, first of all, I've always never felt like I fit in um you know just from how I look I never was I never felt like enough you know I've always you know with my background I've always been basically labeled as a white boy in a tan boy's body <laughs> <laughs> you know I was never black enough never white enough and then, you know, I, my, my background is black, white, and French with a Scottish and Indian background, but, you know, I never was enough, you know, and then here I am, I was discovering my talents at an early age. So I never fit in there. And then I got into modeling at 16. So then, you know, it was always, oh, you think you're better than or something. And it was never the case. And then throw a curveball. I also played sports. So, you know, I stayed very busy and then I just had to be class vice president. So then people hated me for that. So I never really fit in anywhere. So I think the struggle was fitting in. 
Um, and choosing the wrong friends. I think that was the one thing that really stands out to me is I, I won't say like choosing the wrong friends as in like they were stealing or anything, but choosing the wrong friends in a way of like how, how they treated me and how they treated others. And I still stuck around because when you're growing up and going through puberty, I know it sounds crazy now, but thinking back then as a teenager, like when you feel like you don't fit in, or even if you do fit in, no teenager wants to go through high school with no friends. No, you, know, you don't want to start with a group old. of friends and then go find another group of friends. That never works out well. Right. And you don't want to be looked at as a loner. So you keep those friends around and you're unhappy with them and, and they are treating you rudely and they're you know, not the nicest and they talk about you behind your back and they never defend you, but you're always there for them. Um, and then on top of that, the teachers notice and they're like, you really shouldn't be friends with those people because of X, Y, and Z, but you stick around for, like I said, you don't want to be alone. I think those are the two things that I struggle with, fitting in and uh, the right kind of friends. Yeah. I think a lot of people struggle, had struggled in high school with fitting in, right? We're just, we're, yeah. we're, 100% awkward all the time. We don't know what's going on. We think we do. We think that we're super smart and intelligent and we're figuring it all out. But, you know, you look back. When I look back, I'm like, holy cow, I was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I need somebody to come in and just, like, take me aside and be like, hey, we need to we need to get you back on track here. You talk. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> Next song. Um... Y'all, I interviewed some dope people. I really, really did. From the assistant to the models to the photographers to the family and friends. I think it's supposed to be a song. Listen, yeah, I feel like this is like a podcast. I am. Uh, yeah, this might not be. Like you, the boss. Yeah, so that's a good turn up song for me. It's a song. There's no person talking. I don't know what that is, but yeah, we're it's a song. Yeah, it's a song by Rick Ross and Nicki Minaj. Um, it came out years ago and it's a great talk. <laughs> it's so funny because it's a great kind of drive song or a good turn up song, but also like it kind of helps you, even though some of the lyrics are she's trying to cater to him it still is a good reminder of like who you are, like never dim your light, like you're a boss, like rise up don't think you're better than but you're definitely yeah. not less than anyone you know so definitely get up and it's just the beat is great and rick ross he's great and i just i like that song a lot <laughs> yeah it's a great tune so you were obviously a formal model so how did that kind of come into play and did you model for like a long time I did it for a few years. I, um, so at 16, I started out, well, I was supposed to be, supposed to be a uh, Abercrombie model. And there's actually a documentary on, on Netflix about that. It's kind of based off of my experience, but I'm not in it um, because other people have experienced it as well. And so bottom line, I auditioned to be an Abercrombie model. And I think I made it to like the final whatever. It was like under 10. And then I found out at the end, I did not make it. And then they were like, oh, okay, well, why don't you come back in like six months and re-audition? So then I came back six months later and then I re-auditioned and I made it to like the final four. And then they were like, oh, you're not what we're looking for right now. And I'm like, well, why waste my time telling me to come back? six months later, you know? So I was pretty bummed. And I think also at that time, at that age, I kind of let rejection kind of get to me a little bit. Yeah. So I was upset and I stormed into like, I have not a tantrum, but I was like, you can tell I was bothered. And I went into Hollister and I didn't want to be a Hollister model because of my name. I didn't want to be too cliche, but then it just so happened that, you know, casting happened to be in there. And, you know, I guess I was what they were looking for and I was trying to shop and then they were like, oh, you know, kind of like, how can I help you? And then they can notice something was wrong and everything is okay. And I told them, no, I just got rejected twice by, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch. And then they were like, oh, you're a model. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm trying to be. And then they were like, okay, 
you know, and then the lady went to the back and she was getting the person for casting because I guess she was back to doing something. I don't know. And then that's when she came out and then I auditioned and then the rest is history. I ended up becoming a Hollister model. And I was like, how did this happen? This is cool. This is exciting. And then I did it. Um, and then I got out of it. Um, I'd say I did it for about a year, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. About a year. And then I remember after I was, I had quit, um, one of the people on the team, she said to me, she said, well, why are you quitting? And I said, I don't feel like it's for me. You know, I, I don't, I don't really like this because you kind of feel sexualized and you're forced to feel like you're growing up too fast. And, and I don't like people touching all over my body like that, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. So and then she tried to persuade me and she said, look at the billboard. And I said, I, I see it every day. I, I come here. And then she's like, no, but really look, that could be you up there one day. And then I was like, no, I'm okay. I think I'll just stick to singing and songwriting and, and acting. Now I do like modeling, but for me, it would have to be for like print or something like that. Or if they need me to post for something, I'll do it. I'll do like a commercial and then be done with it. But yeah. I'm not modeling for like a career the way I thought I wanted to do it. But then after that, after high school, I ended up getting back into modeling, but I modeled for boutique clothing stores. And that was pretty fun and I enjoyed it, but it still wasn't for me, but it was still something to do. Yeah. What was one thing that you didn't like about the modeling industry? Oh, the modeling industry, I will say... Um, there's well there are a couple but nice. maybe just the way I felt like an object yeah like it, it almost was like you're just a face be quiet and just look yeah and just wear the clothes do the walk oil yeah. up the abs let's see what you got and that made me not feel okay because I'm like well I don't want to be told to shut up and and psychologically even though I didn't know how to form, like, I, I didn't know exactly what to call it, but I knew psychologically that was damaging because down the line, then what if I had developed a, a way of thinking that, oh, I guess I am just this face. Let me just, you know, do yeah. what I'm told. And I, I don't live my life like that. I've always been independent. So I'm like, no, thank you. I'm not going to be told how to live my life. Yeah, I agree. No, I think uh, it's a tough industry and I, I, I don't yeah. think people really understand what mm. actually go through in order to do all of that stuff. And no, no. and I've, I've seen throughout behind the scenes of doing some of the modeling, how photographers treat people and what goes on behind closed doors. And I'm like, mm, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want any of that either. <laughs> no, there's enough going on in Hollywood. And I'm like, I, I, there's too much that I'm already seeing and, things that happen and I'm just like you know what I don't, I don't need all this extra <laughs> that's right I love it all right next song throw it up throw it up watch it all fall out throw it up throw it up that's how we ball out throw it up throw it up Rihanna her voice is just like you know you could play it wouldn't matter what Rihanna song you played you just know that that's Rihanna and that's what it is and I, I love her for that you gotta love Rihanna. I enjoyed her performance at the Super Bowl. Um, this song is another turn up song because I think also it shows another side to me. Like I ha have a side where like, I'm not all love and pain. You know, I do, I enjoy a good turn up song. <laughs> now I'm not gonna be getting on the table and dancing, but you know, I'm, I'm okay with being in the VIP section jumping around, you know? just kind of tossing my hands in the air. Like I'm, I'm fine with that, but oh gosh, Rihanna, she has so many good songs that a lot of people are relating to, or maybe an energy within you that you didn't know you had. And she brings it out of you. And I think also it helps bring out my stiffness. Cause I know sometimes I can be stiff and then it kind of gets you a little loose and you feel good. And yeah. So I, I like that song. <laughs> what has been your favorite concert that you've been to so far? Well, fun fact, I've never been to a concert. Oh, no way. Um, wow. I 
need, I want to change that, but I've never been to a concert before. And I was thinking about that recently. I was like, wait, I've never been to a concert. Cause someone else had asked me, you know, a similar concert, like, or a similar question, like, you know, what's a concert that you enjoyed or, you know, something along the lines. And I was like, I've never been to a concert. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm really missing out. <laughs> I don't want to say yes, but yes, yes, you are. <laughs> I'll go to one soon. You will. Is there a song out there that really stands out to you, but not necessarily the song, but a lyric that you have heard in the song that you just, it just really resonates with you? Uh, yeah. So going back to when I had my struggles with friends as a teenager, um, I will say Mariah Carey's song, Anytime You Need a Friend, really stuck out you know, to me, like when she's, uh, anytime you need a friend, I will be here, you know, um, never leave you alone again. Those like that right there really helped me through, especially, you know, through those hard times where I was like, oh, here we go another day with those fake, fake friends. But <laughs> at least when I went home, I had her lyrics to help me get me through. <laughs> <laughs> How would your friends describe you now? Um, funny independent um hard to say no but I'm getting better at it and um I don't know it's so hard to talk about myself like that um I don't know what else would they say oh maybe a really good cook oh what's your favorite uh, cook so much but I love cooking Mexican food oh nice that's something I do pretty well. I love doing quesadillas and tacos and burritos. I'll do a, a, a bowl, whatever. I like to jazz things up and switch it around, do healthier options as well. And then, you know, typical greasy options, however you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so independent that people can't do something for you? Yeah. And, yeah. and I try to get better at that, but I think just because of, how I am and I'm just, I've ins, you know instilled that in myself at such a young age that is very hard and sometimes I could be having a really bad day and one of my greatest go-tos that I say is I'm fine and it might not be the case but I'm just so independent like oh I'm fine I'll get myself through it you know or whatever yeah. the case may be or if I'm carrying something I drop it I'm like oh thank you but I'm fine I can I can pick it up I can get it you know and I, I have to get better at that <laughs> Yeah. I'm the same way though. I'm very, very independent and I'm very quick. And I don't know if you are, but I'm very quick to return the favor, like almost mm -hmm. too quick. Like people say that they're like, Hey, we want to do something nice for you. They go and do something nice for me. And then like an hour later, I'm sending flowers. You know what I mean? It's like, my karma is like too quick. It's like people mm -hmm. say, you just have to allow people to do nice things for you are you very similar I am I'm very similar <laughs> I, I think it's something that's more habitual like sometimes I don't even think about it I just do yes. it like I don't want to do it so that way you do something nice for me back but I'm just returning the favor just because I in my heart I just feel like it's the right thing to do yeah. um, and then I'm just you know like oh I just did something nice you know here you go I don't need you to, you know, do anything or try to praise me or anything. I don't need any of that. I think I just enjoy being giving and returning the favor. Just, this is who I am. Yeah. And I'm the same way. So we both have to learn to just like accept it and wait a couple of days before we go. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Definitely. We have to work on it. We have to work on it. All right. Next song. Freak me, baby. Oh, yes. Freak me, baby. Freak me, silk. Um, I'll be honest, I forgot that I even put that in that playlist. <laughs> <laughs> so when I heard it, I was like, oh. Uh, but no, I I enjoyed growing up listening to the group Silk. They had great music as well. Um, I don't know why that one came to mind, but um, maybe you just like the band. 
Maybe, and I, it's, it's a great song, even though they're definitely talking about something. Um, <laughs> but it's a great song, great tune. And I think for people who are trying to get in the mood, go listen to it and it'll help you out. <laughs> so speaking of trying to get in the mood, are you single? Married? I am single. No, oh. no I am, oh. I'm single. Um, I'm a very late bloomer. Okay. Um, I actually have never been in a relationship. Okay. I've been really focused on my career and, um, and I'm fine with saying that I'm still a virgin. Like I try my best to wait until marriage, yeah. but I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm, I'm trying my best to wait until marriage. So very late bloomer. So while everyone else is doing their thing and I don't, I don't get to share those experiences when people bring that up in conversation, I just kind of feel awkward and left out like, oh my. So even somebody <laughs> that you've dated that was like, oh, I want to take your virginity from you. So I've never dated. Yeah. So you never, you never had that experience, which is probably a good thing. Right. Cause sometimes it's like a mission for some people, right? They're like, oh, really? I guess, I guess. Yeah. But I think just with me, you know, being so busy with my career and, and starting at an early age, I just kind of kept focused. So I never really put focus on it. So I never dated in high school and I never really saw a need to, because I'm like, all right, I'm going to graduate, get out of here. And then I have things to do, you know, and I was yeah. already doing things back then, but I'm like, I have, you know, things to increase. And then, you know, as time moved on, my career did, and then I just never made it a priority. And then, you know, sometimes I think about it, but also it's not like a priority for me to just start dating. But then at yeah. some point, I guess I have to, because, you know, it's going to be awkward for me, almost like teenage awkward, whereas everyone else is like kind of, they've been through this a few times. And then I'm like, oh, well, here I am, <laughs> square one. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully it comes natural to me. I, I I hope so. But if not, then I guess I'll learn my lessons along the way <laughs> that's right and you'll find the right person that that won't feel awkward because obviously that's what you're waiting for so yeah, yeah. You get something else right so speaking about your career what has been one of the most memorable moments of your career so far oh so much um i will say there there are there are quite a few but maybe being a former Miss United States. Yeah. That was something at, at age 13. I said, one day I'm going to be a, you know, I'm going to be a pageant title holder. I'm going to be a Mr. United States, Mr. USA. And then when it actually happened, I was like, oh, wow. Like 13 year old me is like really happy. So I manifested that way back then. And then I did it and it was a great experience. Um, yeah. It was something that was really fun. Um, you know, it had its challenges, but I think it was, for the most part, really great, great learning experience. I learned a lot more about myself and I was able to do things for different communities and different things around, you know, the world. Um, what I could do, because when I when I finished, I um, I ran during actually 2020. Oh, wow. So it was, you know, during quarantine. So there wasn't too much I could do, but there were still things that I did. I did a lot and it was really fun. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite amazing. How was your career during COVID? Like, did you do lots of online stuff or just write a yeah. million songs because there was nothing else you could really do? Well, okay, so I was filming for this show when everything happened. So it was actually um, the second show that I was on. The first show I was on, it was a hit show when I was, and I got on it when I was 20. And then after that, I ended up getting on this other show that's known, but I guess my episode got cut because while we were filming, I'll never forget we were in Pasadena and it was raining hard, really, like really hard that day. And they, you know, they sent a driver to come pick me up and everything and took me there. And so then, you know, of course you're waiting your turn, you go through, you know, your hair, makeup, wardrobe, all that. And we're filming the scene and I just remember during takes when we had like little breaks. And now that I think back at it, a lot of those breaks were extended because I think they were trying to get word on whether everything was getting shut down or not. 
but we didn't know at the time. So during those breaks, I remember looking outside and it was pouring rain. It was crazy. You know, in LA, when it rains, it pours. So I just remember seeing less and less people outside. And I said, this is pretty awkward. Like, it's like a ghost town now. And I'm like, why are these, you know, bars and these restaurants, why are they closing? And I would see them close, but it would be like 6 p.m. And I'm like, isn't this your, you know, your top of your hour? Like, you're getting ready to really start things. And then that's when they got word and said, oh, you have to shut down because um, everything in Hollywood is shutting down. Like, the world is shutting down. So they just took me home. Um, so I never got to finish filming. So then after that, I'm thinking like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know um, if this is going to be two weeks, a month, whatever. But I knew immediately I needed to start a YouTube channel because I'm like, I'm one of those people who I think ahead and I'm like, okay, for however long we're locked in our houses. So I want to just create content. Yeah. So I created, you know, I mean, I, the channel is private now just because I don't have a use for it. I don't make any more videos, but for a couple of years, yeah, I made YouTube videos just to, you know, give extra content. Then, you know, I had my reign as my pageant title. Um, and then I started writing my book and then I had public interviews and then photo shoots and stuff. But thankfully my photographer who I've worked with for years, I can be with him at his house and he has like a really nice big house in, in Calabasas. So it's really nice to do different scenery. We can do it social distance wise. So I kept pretty busy. And I yeah. think that's the main thing because I don't know what I would have done if I had nothing to do. I, I can't be lazy. So I was like, what, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, it's true. I remember where I was when COVID kind of hit. I was literally going in for an MRI and I'm like, Usually, because I cancer prior, so I go every like three to six months. So usually I'm like in and out, like there's no waiting. It's like yeah. in and out, it's first thing in the morning. And I'm like in there for like ever. And I'm like, what's going on? It's like two hours. So this lady comes up to me, she's like, oh, we're going to have to put an IV because you're obviously like super dehydrated and it's probably not good for the MRI. And I'm like, what's happening? And she just like was casual. She's like, there's a pandemic going on. And I'm like, what, and at first I didn't even understand the word. I was like, what does that mean? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> I see like zombies coming in the hospital. Like what is happening? Like mm -hmm. it's so random. So this is very time. Yeah. This is where this podcast really came into fruition because it's like, mm -hmm. I need to now be super creative and um, I'm in the financial industry. So that's really not creative. But this allowed me to bring out that creative side of me. So it's pretty cool. It's it's one of those things is everybody's going to remember where they were. And everybody's going to remember if they did something during that time. So, I, yeah, like I said, it was a scary time, but there are parts of it I miss. You know, I think just kind of even though I was still working um, with the my projects and everything and still writing music and stuff as well. Um, I think there was just something about it where you kind of were on your own time. So you can kind of get yes. up a little later, be in your, pit, your pajamas and, you know, eat what you want and then, you know, be okay with having wine at like 3 p.m. <laughs> 11, whatever works. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> That's right. I love it. All right, next song. A Girl Like You, another great song. Oh my gosh, I love that song. Um, of course, I, I grew up listening to it, but the earliest memory that I have is, it's, it's okay, so it's one of those songs where it's a great movie song as well. It's a great song, it's a great movie song, and I remember they played it in Charlie's Angels 1 or 2. Um, one of those and I remember it from that movie so that's kind of why I put it in there because I love that movie I love Drew Barrymore you know uh, Lucy Liu and, and Cameron Diaz they're both great um, and I just I remember that song from that movie and it really gets you hyped because you're like oh what's happening and you see them getting all dolled up and then you see them getting their gear together and they're like 
They're not taking any crap. They're like, we can ready to get this person. They're ready to take down Demi Moore. And <laughs> so you're like, it's like a good build up song in a movie. Yeah, it really is. What is one thing that you love about being a singer? Um, I think taking my lyrics and bringing passion and relatability to my listeners and my fans. Um, I think the reactions, just because it's it's one thing to sing it to yourself or when you're alone, but then when you sing it for someone else and then they're like, you get the reaction or I've had some people say to me that their lyric, my lyrics have helped them remember their first boyfriend or girlfriend in high school, you know, and they're like in their fifties now. And I just, I guess it just, I like to be relatable. So as a singer, I think relatability really makes me feel good. Huh. I can help one person. A little bit. Them. Have you had any stalkers? Have you <laughs> had any, you know, interesting fans that you were like, oh, that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, I've actually had two stalkers before. No, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I've had two stalkers. Um, it's bad. I mean, they were saying some very vulgar things and I don't know how they got my number, but they also found out where I went to high school. They found out what town I grew up in. They had my LA address and they're like, oh, I'm going to put something in a box and mail it to you. And I was like, this is scary. So I had to like file a police report. It's, it was very scary, but then, you know, they didn't do anything, but then you just, you never know. And, and but what goes on these days. Yeah. Um, I think the the one of the most that was scary, but the first stalker, um, I think was super scary because I got a message that said to me, "Oh, I'm glad you made it home safely last night," and that was scary. And I was like, "Um, okay," and then I never heard from that person again. <laughs> But it was super weird. And I was just like, um, okay. And then they said, oh, I've been watching you for a little while. And I was like, well, who are you? <laughs> but I don't want to ask too many questions because then I'm going to engage and then it's yeah. going to go further. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> this Have you ever awkward. had any memorable moments with a with a fan? Um, yeah, I remember, so there was a show that I was a guest star on called Vice Principals with Dana McBride, and that was back in the day, and I remember I ran into a fan who really loved the show, and I didn't think they recognized me, and then they did, and they were like, oh my goodness, like, can we take a picture, and then it was super fun, and then, you know, I um, helped them take a selfie, and they posted on Twitter or something, and it was like really cool. But it was unexpected because it was out of the blue, you know, it was just yeah. kind of going up the day. And I was like, oh, that was really nice, you know. I'm like, I, I love it, you know, when people come up to me and, you know, even if they don't want a picture, they just want to say hi or just yeah. be friendly. I'm I'm so fine with that. Yeah, I love that. That's good that you love that. Because I could, uh, you know, over time, I'm assuming it probably gets, you know, you get all types of fans. You get the super nice ones that are like, you know, they don't really need 50 million pictures of themselves with you. They just want to say hi, like you said. And then you get the ones that are like, hey, I want to get all these pictures. And then you get the ones that want the pictures to sell the pictures. And you know what I mean? You just yeah. be really hard in that industry because you don't know. You want to be kind, right? You want to be kind to all of them. But at the same time, you're like, oh, my goodness. Like, where? who do you trust? What do you trust? Yeah. And I think that's where where I say it's hard for me to say no because then it's like oh my goodness I, I can't be the one that turned them down for a picture or from a meet and greet or a hello like I just I have to say yes and like even if it's quick and then it's like some woman have to physically pull me away in order for me to like go about my day because then I'm like no no they have to they want a picture or they want to say hello they just want a handshake like you just never know what someone's going through you know, but you also don't know what someone's intentions are, but it's hard for me to say no. And I'm like, they just, they just want to say hi. <laughs> it's very true. All right. Next song. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. 
Ain't it at the Roxbury, really? <laughs> so you really pull the words right out of my mouth. That's the reason why I love that song. When I tell you, what is his name? I forgot his name, but he also played in that movie, Corky Romano. But when um, he and Will Ferrell were in that movie and they're bouncing their head and he hits it and breaks a glass, that gets me every time. I love it because they can't get a date. They are struggling and they have all this extra hairspray and grease in their hair. And they have these really, really bright suits on. And they go clubbing almost every night. They don't take their job seriously. Their father is tired of them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just trying to go home with a girl. And they're super duper funny. But that movie is so iconic. And I feel like it does not get enough uh word you know just because it's such an iconic movie and that's why I put that in that that song in the list because I really love that song yeah so obviously you live in LA mm. you probably see people who is somebody famous that you've seen that you're like oh my god that's whoever well I've seen a whole lot of people and they were also a lot of events that I've been in or been at with a lot of those people who are of all different lists. Um, Have you ever know. met one of them that you were excited to meet, but then maybe not so excited after you met them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I won't say the person's name, but they just weren't what I expected. Um and there was another person who's also very well known. They weren't, okay, so the other person was really nice to me and we've been at several events together. And, and this person is much older than me actually, like I think they're in their sixties maybe or something like that, but very well known. And they were always nice to me, but they weren't nice to, I'll say some of the staff members of the event. Mm. But then, like I said, there were lots of people who, that are great. Um, let me see. Um, oh, you know who's a sweetheart? There are two. Um, Brooke Shields, she's a complete sweetheart. I've met her several times. And Catherine O'Hara, she is oh, wow. super funny. I, I I kid you not, um, that that woman is hilarious. It's like sometimes I feel like it's hard for her to turn off her character, but then when you get to know her real personality, it's like you're still so funny and loving. Like who can't love you? <laughs> yeah. What do you think the hardest part of living in LA is for somebody? Ooh, um, aside from the traffic. I think finding the right group of people because yeah. you know, everyone is either trying to be with a certain people to get ahead or to get more um, or, you know, no one seems to want to be real. They'll say one thing and then go to the next. Um, and it's kind of sad, but it's, I think those are the two hardest things. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see LA being a really tough place to live. You know, people go there, want to obviously succeed, have their dreams come true. And again, they can meet the wrong person, do the wrong thing. And then it's like their dream is over, right? Which is really, really sad. Yeah. And you know what? I'll give another one. Um, the car crashes. Oh, there's so many people that street race or they speed. I mean, I've seen people go 70 in a 25 mile zone. I've seen, I've seen a hit and run where the person that was hit died right on impact. I mean, there are too many. I think it's so, so ridiculous. There's no need to speed. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. All right. Another song. Okay. 
I just love Prince. He's like one of my favorite artists in the planet. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Prince is like, I always say he's like a best friend in my head. And I really wish I could have met him. Yeah. Because, and I I will say, you know, like when when Michael and Whitney and Prince passed, those are the three people like I weeped for days because I was like, no, like those are the people that I was like was supposed to be in the studio with. Like I'm I always looked at Prince like a uncle who would not only guide me in the right direction in the industry, but also on a personal level, he would, you know, help me keep my head on my shoulders and say, Hey, like get your head out of the clouds, or you know, this is how you not do things. And so, you know, it was very uh, detrimental to me, but I chose that song. Obviously it came out before I was born, I believe. Um, but I love Prince. One of my favorite movies is Purple Rain. Yeah, me too. I, just, I, I know, right? And I just relate to Prince in so many ways, but I think one of the ways is because with my personality and with his personality, he like has that perfect mix of like um, feminine and masculine personality. And I have that as well. And he's just like super funny. And like, if you go back and watch some of his interviews, he's like, he gives the best facial expressions. He's super funny. He's super talented. I mean, I don't know someone who can, you know, sing, dance, carry a stage and play the guitar. And I'm just like, who are you? (laughs) (laughs) 27 instruments. Like it's, I think he was born before his time. Right. I think his music, like totally, you know, he was putting stuff out that people were like, what, like, I don't even understand what this even is. And then now we're starting to hear a lot of that stuff that he was putting out 15 years ago. Exactly. Well, you know, he's been trying to tell us, (laughs) but you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's like an uncle in my head. (laughs) I love it. So what kind of projects do you have coming out right now? Are you working on a new album? Are you working on some new songs? Well, I can't say, but what I can say is I am in the studio and I'll leave it there. So there are some exciting things coming and a couple other projects that I can't legally say just yet, but I can't wait to announce them when it's time. So I just try to stay busy, but I love it and I think one of the next steps that I want to encounter is really start collaborating with artists because who doesn't love collaborations and they, you know, for the most part seem to go well. And I haven't had that experience yet. Yeah, that would be really fun. Who would you like to collaborate with? Well, of course, Mariah and Tony. Um, I would love to collaborate with Miguel. Um, Any, you know, pretty much... I always say anyone who likes to have fun isn't lazy, like they're very serious about their craft, you know, and someone who really wants to create memories, you know, like I just, let's get in there, let's do it, let's have fun and let the energy show through that, you know, through that art. And and I think that's someone that I want to work with you know, help bring out the best in me and I help bring out the best in you if if I can. I love it. So where can we find you on social media? Where can we listen to your music? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is the Hollis Morissette and my Twitter is the Hollis M. My last name is too long to fit. So it's just the Hollis M on Twitter. Um, my website, hollismorissette.com. Um, and then my music is on all platforms. And so I've been told radio stations. So I guess there are two. But if you want to find it on Spotify, you can search my name, Hollis Morissette, and I'm there as well. Is there a song that you have put out so far that you, you know, you just feel like it's one of your greatest songs so far? Yeah, my song, I Can't Hate You. I think that's one of my greatest just because it has such versatility and even though it might be singing about you know you could be you can take it as singing about someone um romantically if you really spin it the way I did it you can also talk about friends friends who have done you wrong and like you know I don't hold a grudge I can't hate you 
I saw everything you did, but it was yeah. it in the past, I wiped my hands clean with it. It's nothing to do with me personally. I love it. So we're down to your last song, and I hope I pick a good one here and that you're going to love. So here okay. we go. I don't care if these bitches don't like me, because, like, I'm pretty as fuck. <laughs> Just the other day, I heard a whole say. So her... <laughs> Right. She's making waves. And I love it. I love people that make waves. Right. I felt like Prince made waves. I felt like Michael Jackson made waves. I love people that make waves. Disturbed because I'm a disturb like I'm a disturbance in a sense. Right. Like yeah. I'm raw, unique. And I love people that are like that. And I think Megan is. Yeah, let's go do it, girl, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I like Megan Thee Stallion because she's very raw with her lyrics. She's very forward you know, and I like that, like, she's not all timid, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying for her, she puts herself out there, and not only does she do it in her lyrics, but with her personality, she also walks the walk, and that is a song that I like as well, because it shows another personality to me that I can also not be boring, and I can turn up as well, and have a good time, and and it just in 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 regards to the energy of the song, at least, you know, I think she's she's amazing, and I I, I like that song, and yeah, yeah, we need more people like that in our world, and I agree. I think there's way too many timid people, but like are are not necessarily wanting to be timid either. They're just so scared to be themselves. Yeah, and also it could be how they're raised, and they know want to disappoint certain people but I'm like if you're putting the art out you're the one paying your bills go for it that's right <laughs> so before I let you go I would love for you to leave me with some words of wisdom words of wisdom um you know it's so funny you asked that um I recently learned off of TikTok and I forgot who it was as a woman who gives these different words of wisdom and um, I, even though I, I, I'm not like a, a prude or anything. So like I, I can have a potty mouth. I just do it alone at home. So I'll, I'll sweeten it up a bit. But the words of wisdom would be um, in regards to living your life and doing what you want to do, never explaining yourself to anyone. And she said, do you think bees waste their time explain to flies why honey tastes better than bleep <laughs> they don't, they so don't. Your life, you don't only want any explanation <laughs> that's amazing words of wisdom thank you so much for joining us today on music junkies i hope thank you, have you good time. please like subscribe follow i will obviously leave all of your handles on the show when i put it out for you and uh yeah thanks so much thank you for having me <laughs>